Hello everyone, let's talk about uh, ACF and PACF. Let's learn what they are and how we can use them to determine which one between AR and MA models we should use to analyze time series data. How many days we need to look back in order to predict the current value. The full name of ACF is autocorrelation function. This factor measures the correlation between the current value and values at the previous time spots. For example, if we believe that today's stock price is correlated to yesterday, then we can calculate the ACF value to measure how strong the two days are correlated. We can also calculate another ACF to measure today's stock price and the stock prices two days back in order to show how strong these two days are correlated. Then we have a PACF. PACF stands for Partial Autocorrelation Function. This factor still measures the correlation between two days, but uh, we also consider the influence of uh, other days on the two days we measure. For example, we can calculate the uh, ACF value to measure the correlation of uh, stock prices between today and yesterday. But don't forget, today's stock price is correlated to the day before yesterday. Yesterday's stock price could also be correlated to the day before yesterday. So there is an influence of the day before yesterday on the ACF value we just calculated. If we want to measure the real correlation between today and yesterday, we have to take out the influence of the day before yesterday. PACF between today and yesterday can help us to do that. When we use PACF to measure the correlation between two time spots, we actually measure the real correlation by taking out the influence of uh, other time spots. That's why, in practice, we use PACF to evaluate the AR model, the autoregression model, because the AR model is built on the correlation between time spots, right? That's why we have to measure the real correlation between time spots in order to build the AR model. And then we use the ACF factor to evaluate the MA model. Of course, later in this semester, I will show everyone how to use the software to calculate ACF and PACF values. Here I want to show everyone some examples so that you can have a better idea about how to use ACF and PACF to determine AR model or MA model for time series analysis. Once you get a time series data set, the first step is to look at if there is an obvious trend inside of this data set. If there is, then this data set violates the stationary data assumption. We have to use differencing or diffing to detrend this data set. In other words, to take out the trend from this data set. Usually we will use a one leg differencing to detrend a time series data set. If you forget what the stationary data assumption and the differencing are, I listed the lecture video in this video's description section. I will not repeat how to detrend the data set here. But after the detrend, we need to evaluate which model between AR and MA models we should use. As we just discussed, we use a PACF to evaluate the AR model. And only the significant PACF values will be chosen to evaluate an AR model. The number of the significant PACF values determines the order of the AR model. For example, if we find that yesterday's PACF value is significant, then in the AR model, we'll choose yesterday's stock price to predict today's stock price. We call this model first order AR model because only one previous day is used to predict the current stock price. In another case, 
if we find that the PACF values of uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday are both significant, we'll use the stock price of uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday together to predict today's stock price. We call that model second order AR model because we use uh, two previous days stock prices to predict today's stock price. We can apply the same rule to ACF. If we find that yesterday's ACF is significant, then we should use yesterday's error term to predict the current value. Our model is called a first order MA model. Since both AR and MA model can be used for time series analysis, when we determine a model, we should look at PACF and ACF values together. If several models could work, then we should choose a simpler model to keep our analysis concise. Let's see some examples. These two charts are examples of ACF chart and PACF chart. Notice that there are two horizontal blue dash lines in each chart. They represent the significant thresholds. In each chart, we also have several vertical lines. They represent the ACF and the PACF values on each time spot. Only the vertical lines that exceed the horizontal dash lines are considered significant. In this case, we have uh, several significant ACF values and two significant PACF values. The significant PACF values are on day one and day two, as you can see in the chart at the bottom. Which one between AR and MA models we should use? According to what we just learned, we should use the second order AR model. Why? Because if we use second order AR model, we only need to use yesterday's value and the day before yesterday's value to predict the current value. In our model, we only have uh, two independent variables. They are yesterday's value and the day before yesterday's value. But if we insist on using MA model, according to the chart above, we have uh, several significant ACF values. In the MA model, we need to consider all of those days with significant ACF values. In the MA model, we will definitely have more than two independent variables. That will make our analysis more complicated. That's why between AR and MA models, we choose AR model for this analysis. As we just said, we want to use a second order AR model. That's why at the bottom of this slide, you can see we write AR parenthesis 2. In the future, if you decided to use a first order AR model, then you will write AR parenthesis 1 and so on and so forth. Notice that the color of the dash lines are software dependent. In this case, the color is blue. But if you use other software, the dash lines could be in red no matter what color it will be used, the dash lines represent the significant thresholds. Only the vertical lines that exceed the horizontal dash lines are considered significant. Please remember this point. Let's see another example. Should we use AR or MA model for this analysis? We should use MA model. According to the charts, we only have uh, one significant ACF value, that's the first day. But uh, we have uh, three significant PACF values. If we use the AR model, we have to consider three independent variables, yesterday, the day before yesterday, and three days back. But uh, if we use the MA model, we only need to consider the error term of yesterday. The MA model is simpler. That's why we want to use the first order MA model for this analysis. In some cases, the model choice could be very flexible. For example, in this case, we have uh, three significant PACF values and uh, several significant ACF values. 
then you can decide to use third order AR model for the analysis. But uh, this is just uh, one option. Another option is you can choose first order AR model plus first order MA model for the analysis. Because yesterday's ACF value and PACF values are both significant. That's why we can choose yesterday's value and uh, the error term of yesterday as two independent variables to predict the current value. This is the second option. Actually, the second option is even better than the first option. Because in the second option, we only have uh, two independent variables in the model. If you want to use AR and MA model together for the analysis, you will write AR MA parentheses 1 comma 1. The first one represents the first order of AR model. The second one represents the first order of MA model. In the future, you can change the numbers as well according to the ACF and PACF analysis. For example, if you want to use second order AR model plus first order MA model for the analysis, you can write AR MA 2 comma 1. Here is another question. Between ARMA11 and ARMA21, which model should we use? We want to choose the model with minimal error terms. In another lecture video, I will show everyone how to measure the error terms of a model. Sometimes people will write ARMA as ARIMA. There is an I between AR and MA. I represents integrated. It's a symbol showing you how to handle datasets with trend. There is another number in the middle of the parentheses. It represents the times you applied differencing to the dataset. Let's say you get this ACF and PACF charts after first differencing, and you decide to use first order AR and first order MA model for the analysis. Then you will write ARIMA111. One, one, one. one in the middle represents you have applied one differencing to the dataset in order to remove the trend inside of this dataset. If you didn't apply any differencing, then you can write ARIMA101. One, zero, one. zero in the middle represents you didn't apply any differencing to the dataset. What if none of the ACF or PACF is significant? Then this time series is random. You cannot use AR or MA directly for the analysis. You have to apply differencing to the dataset. But after the first differencing, you find the ACF and the PACF are still not significant. Then this dataset is called a random work. You cannot do anything further to use AR or MA to this model. You have to consider other modeling techniques for the analysis of this dataset.